Hello, my friends. I'm so happy to be with you again. Today's topic is quantum healing. And uh, I believe there are a lot of luminaries participating. So very happy that quantum healing has become mainstream. So before I say anything, I should just mention that uh, I originally used this word in 1988. I originally coined the expression quantum healing with this book that I wrote in 1988. And it was vilified. It was criticized by mainstream. And I was attacked by many people for using this phrase quantum healing. Uh, since then, um, Dr. Amit Goswami has used this phrase. Dr. Amit Goswami is a physicist. And now, um, many years later, what, 1988, so it's 2022, so we can say 30 years later, quantum healing has been reissued with an introduction by uh, Dr. Rudy Tanzi, who is a geneticist at Harvard and a neuroscientist with all the knowledge that we have today about epigenetics, I think we can say quantum healing has uh, become mainstream. But most people don't actually understand that the phrase quantum healing is used metaphorically, as is everything that we do in science. Uh, scientific explanations are models for experienced reality. And experienced reality comes only in the form of sensations, perceptions, images, feelings, and thoughts. Once again, every experience you have is either a sensation or a perception or an image or a feeling or a thought. And of course, these have their source in pure consciousness. So if we understand consciousness as the ontological primitive, then we realize that everything that we call a physical entity is actually a phenomenon. Everything that you call a physical entity is a phenomenon. So my body looks physical, but it's a phenomenon. It's an intermittent stream of sensations, images, feelings, and thoughts. That's all it is. And uh, it is not a constant entity. So um, everyone's body begins as a fertilized ovum and then it becomes a zygote and then an embryo and then an infant and then a baby and a toddler and on and on you know baby infant toddler teenager adult and gets older and then finally dies so where is the body here which body do you have if you say i have a body then which one uh, the body is an activity it's a verb it's not a noun and the experience of the body is an intermittent stream of sensations, images, feelings, thoughts, period. Okay, what about the mind? The mind is also an intermittent stream of thoughts and emotions. So we said, do you have a fixed mind? Obviously not. The mind has been defined as um, an embodied and relational process that regulates the flow of energy and information in the body, but the body itself is also both embodied and relational. We uh, don't have a fixed body. Okay, every time you look at a body, it's like taking a selfie and forgetting the self. Literally, also, when you define somebody's personality, uh, it's like taking a selfie of their mind and calling, calling it the self. The self is much more than mind and body. It's the source of all experience. And body and mind are one unit. So um, just like wave and particle are one unit, um, mass and energy are one unit, space and time are one entity, so is body and mind. But it's an entity that's a phenomenon, even though it appears as a form. So this is true, by the way, of everything. Every form is a phenomenon. And every phenomenon, uh, at least as far as our biology is concerned, is the arising and subsiding of an intermittent stream of sensations, images, feelings, and thoughts. Now, once we understand that, then we can also see that um, 
these uh, experiences, this is what we call experience. Sensation is an experience, hardness, softness, brightness, color. Um, these are all sensations or sense perceptions. But as we look at any form, we'll see that the, the form itself is the arising and subsiding of sensations, images, feelings, thoughts. And what is the source? The source is pure consciousness. So what is quantum healing? It is going to the source. Okay. The source of thought is also the source of perception. It's also the source of emotions. It's also the source of any experience. It's also the source of how we define things. So labels and descriptions and metaphors, all, where are they conceived? In consciousness. So consciousness conceives, governs, constructs, and becomes everything that we call reality, including the reality of our body and our mind. And when we go to this source through meditation, and there are many ways to meditate. My new book, <clears throat> Total Meditation, goes into the whole uh, range of meditative practices, including self-reflection, self-inquiry, uh, understanding the role of emotional intelligence and self-regulation, understanding the meaning of joy, empathy, compassion, love, truth, goodness, beauty, harmony, but most importantly, understanding that when we go to the source of thought, then we encounter the source of all experience. And if you don't interfere with that, that is the source of what we call quantum healing. Now, in physics, of course, the word quantum means the smallest indivisible unit of uh, energy in which waves of energy uh, are emitted or absorbed. But using it as a metaphor for the body, a quantum of experience is what we call a qualia, quality of awareness. So colors, shapes, forms are all qualia, as are tastes and smells and textures and sounds, but also emotions, thoughts, feelings, and even imagination. They're all qualia. Qualia means qualities of awareness, which means awareness, pure consciousness, modifying itself as those experiences. By modifying our experiences in the direction of truth, goodness, beauty, harmony, love, compassion, joy, equanimity, but most importantly, through transcendence of all experience. So experience can be perception of the world. It can be interoception, knowing what's happening inside the body, but it can also be emotions or feelings and thoughts. And all these are entangled with each other. And they're all modified forms of pure consciousness. So what is pure consciousness? Pure consciousness has the following characteristics. Number one, it's a field of infinite possibilities. Number two, it's a field of non-local correlation, which means everything is correlated with everything else. Today, we also call that entanglement, synchronicity, superposition. But basically, everything is inseparably um, one with everything else. Number three, it, uh, pure consciousness is unpredictable. We can't say what our next thought will be or our next experience will be. Uh, number four, pure consciousness is infinitely creative because it is unpredictable. Direct correlation between unpredictability and creativity. And finally, it's the source of um, attention and intention. So once we understand these are the qualities of pure consciousness, we can modify pure consciousness into any experience through a combination of sensations, images, feelings, thoughts, perceptions. The key is transcendence, going beyond thought, going beyond the secret passages, the dark alleys, the ghost-filled attics of the mind and going to the source of all experience and then abiding there with a subtle intention. In yogic traditions, this is called dharna. Dharna means focused awareness, focused attention, dhyan, which means meditation, and samadhi, which means transcendence. This is the key. If we can do that, and this also has a Sanskrit word for it, it's called sankalpa. Sankalpa means subtle intention. So unlike uh, the Western ontological frameworks that we have about reality, where the ontological primitive of the universe is matter, um, 
we in the Eastern wisdom tradition say that matter is just a convenient metaphor for modified forms of consciousness. And the key to healing is actually getting to the source. That includes social and emotional intelligence, that includes withdrawal of the senses, that includes uh, controlled breathing, that includes mind-body coordination through yoga asanas, but it also includes um, interoception, which is withdrawal of the senses. And then dharana, dhyan, samadhi. These are the eight limbs of practice that get us to the source of all experience. In that source of all experience is least entropy. Uh, and there is homeostasis. Homeostasis means self-regulation, which means hormones are being self-regulated, immune function is being reg self-regulated, um, everything, body temperature is being regulated. So if you want to use a simple word for quantum healing, it would be the return to the memory of wholeness or return to homeostasis or return to source or return to the presence of being. Now, of course, there are a lot of nuances and I outlined them in my books on meditation, which include understanding the whole totality of awareness, awareness of five senses, awareness of uh, the body, awareness of the interior of the body, awareness of mental space, awareness of the web of relationship, awareness of the ecosystem, which we call the biosphere of which we are an expression, and ultimately awareness of awareness. And when we get to that, then we are holy, we are whole, and we are healed. And that healing is ultimate healing. It means we find freedom um, in our inner being and understand that our inner being, our true self is independent of all experience. It's independent of anything that we can call a perception or a sensation or an image or a thought. And in that freedom is wholeness, self-regulation, the return of the memory of who we really are. The word whole, the word healing, and the word whole, healing whole, are the same. When we return to presence, to source, we are holy and we are healed. And at that moment, there is transcendence. We experience our true nature as beyond uh, space, time, and causality. We also uh, experience the emergence of platonic values like truth, goodness, harmony, and we lose the fear of death uh, because the true self um, is not subject to birth and death. The true self is, is formless, and being formless, it is infinite, and is constantly modifying itself into finite experiences. But as long as we are aware that every finite experience has a source in the infinite, and that infinite source of being is actually the true self beyond our ego uh, mind, beyond our socially constructed identity as an ego body mind squeezed into the volume of a body or the span of a lifetime, um, when we go beyond that, we are healed. That's what quantum healing is. So all the best, my friends. Um, join this whole movement of understanding that the physical body is actually a projection of the subtle body, and the subtle body is a projection of the causal body, and the causal body itself is is the projection of infinite, uh, formless, unbounded, eternal, timeless being, which is our inner self. Thank you, and God bless. Well, thank you, Deepak.